Hello everyone, welcome to the 14th lecture of this video series and in this video we are going to solve some problems from Carnot and Jay. Okay, so the first problem of today is from JAM exam of 2018. And the problem states that which one of the figures directly represents the TS diagram of a Carnot engine. So, in the previous video, we learned about Carnot engine and also how to represent that in a PV diagram. But in this question, we are asked to draw the PS diagram. So this will be a good exercise for us to see how we can get a PS diagram from the given PV diagram. So let me first draw the PV diagram of the Carnot engine that we know. So the y axis is P and the x axis is V. So the initial point, let us call it A, there will be a isothermal expansion to point B, then an adiabatic expansion to point C, then an isothermal compression to point D, and from that an adiabatic compression to the initial point A and the direction of this process will be from A to B to B to C, C to D to D to A. So let me write them explicitly. A B is an isothermal expansion as you can see the volume is increasing from A to B. Then B C will be and a diabetic expansion CD will be an isothermal compression and DA will be an adiabatic compression. So during the process AB, the temperature is constant at T1 because this is a nice thermal process. From B to C, the temperature goes from T1 to T2 and here we have T1 greater than T2. So T1 will be our source temperature and T2 will be our sink temperature. So during CD again T will be constant at T2 so here T will be T1 and here T will be T2 and during DA again the temperature will go from T2 to P1. So this is the PV diagram of an Arno engine where we have shown all the four processes. Now our goal is to obtain the PS diagram 
from this PV diagrams. So from this PV diagram. Okay. So let us proceed in that direction. So what is an PS diagram first? PS diagram is where we draw the temperature as a function of the entropy. So in a TS diagram the y axis will be temperature and x axis will be entropy. So T is here absolute temperature and S is uh, entropy. So to obtain the PS diagram from PV diagram, we are going to need to plot all these curves separately and also take care of the directions. So we are going to do them one by one. So AB part first. So AB is an isothermal expansion P1 equal to constant. So AB will be a line which is parallel to the x-axis which is representing the entropy in our case. But what will be the change in S? or delta s for this process that we need to find out. So again this is in connection to lecture 9 where we learnt about thermodynamic processes but I am going to do this very shortly here. So let us assume ideal gas. And we know dQ equal to dU plus dW and as P is constant we know that U will also be constant which means dU is going to be 0. We can plug this in this equation which will give us EQ is equal to DW or PDS is equal to PDV or PS will be PDV over T which if we integrate, we are going to obtain that from initial to final state, integration from initial to final state, PDV by T. And we are going to call the term on the left hand side, which is integration from I to A. We are going to call this term delta S, which is the change in entropy because this is an integration of TS. So, we have delta S is integration from initial to final state PDV over T and we also know from ideal gas equation that PV equal to NRT which implies P is nothing but NRT over V and this expression here we will plug in this integration so that will allow us to calculate the amount of change in entropy so this will be i to f dv over t times nrt over v 
so t and t will cancel out in the denominator and numerator and we are going to obtain the final integration as integration over i to a which is the initial and final state in r times dv over v and as this integration is over v we can write the volumes to be v i to v f where v i is the initial volume and v f is the final volume now this will simply give us in our ln v f over v i so this is our final answer so let me put a box around this so what does that mean it means that delta s is greater than zero when v f is greater than v i as both n and r are positive constant for a particular system r is a universal constant n is constant for a particular system okay so the process we are looking at a b which is an isothermal expansion that means volume is increasing in this case so v f is greater than v i or for our notation we can also write v b is greater than v a ok so this also means that during the a b process delta s is going to be greater than 0 so we have already established that as this is an isothermal expansion the curve will be represented as parallel to the x axis so this will be this horizontal curve and the direction will be in such a way that s is greater than 0 so this will be from here to there okay so this is our point a and this is our point b now we need to plot this curve for all the parts of the process okay now so look into the second process which is an adiabatic expansion and this is given by this bc part where the temperature of the system changes from t1 to t2 this is an adiabatic expansion where the temperature changes from t1 to t2 And as you know that T1 is greater than T2, then in this case, the temperature is going to decrease. And also, we know that for an adiabatic process, dQ is 0. And also for this reversible case, this will be actually an reversible adiabatic process which we also call as an isentropic process. What does isentropic means? This means that the entropy of the system is constant. So, delta s is going to be 0 and delta t is going to be t2 minus t1 where t1 is greater than t2. So, how will it look in this diagram ts diagram so as delta s is 0 so this is going to be a vertical line and as we know that 
the temperature is decreasing the direction will be downwards so from b to c this will be like this a vertical line where t is decreasing and the fact that delta t is less than 0 which we are stating here this implying delta t is less than 0 the fact that and this is true this can be also derived from the equation of an adiabatic process generally in terms of p and v this is given as p v to the power gamma equal to constant but as we are interested in the temperature and we know that this is an expansion so we know how the volume changes so we are going to need to represent this equation in terms of t and v we have already done this in the lecture number 9 so this turns out to be t v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to constant so we are going to have tb vb to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to tc vc to the power gamma minus 1 where needless to say that b subscript is actually representing the temperature volume and pressure in state b and similarly c is also representing at state c so we know here that vc is greater than vb because we have an adiabatic expansion here so we will have tb over tc is equal to vc over vb to the power gamma minus 1 and as you know gamma is greater than 1 for an ideal gas so let us write it explicitly here vc over vb is greater than 1 and if you plug into the fact that gamma is also greater than 1 we will obtain vc over vb to the power gamma minus 1 is also greater than 1 so we will have tb over tc is also greater than 1 which means that tb is greater than tc and in our diagram what is tb we have represented it as t1 and tc we have represented as t2 so we are again establishing the fact that t1 is greater than t2 so in an adiabatic expansion if the system goes from t1 to t2 the temperature will actually decrease so here we have b has temperature t1 and c has temperature t2 so the second process is complete so now we are going to look at process cd which is an isothermal compression and how it is going to be represented in the ts diagram we can conclude directly from the AB process which is an isothermal expansion so again the CD part will also be horizontal line which is parallel to the horizontal axis representing entropy so here 
this is temperature constant and as this is an compression so in that case the final volume will be less than the initial volume so the delta s will actually be negative because vf by vi will be less than 1 so during the cd process delta s will actually be negative and temperature will be constant so this will be represented by this line okay so what i have drawn in the diagram let me quickly write the things for this case also so isothermal compression means that dt is equal to constant which is implying or i horizontal line or parallel to x axis line and as this is an compression then this will imply that delta s is I'm sorry I have written it wrongly here the delta t is constant delta t is actually 0 t is constant which will imply that delta t equal to 0 delta s is given by nr ln vf over vi so compression means vf is less than vi which implies vf over vi is less than 1 so we have delta s is less than 0 okay so now we are left with only the last part which is actually an adiabatic compression so in this process the system goes from state d to state a and as we have learned from this bc process we can use the results here also that for an adiabatic expansion the delta s is going to be 0 so similarly for an adiabatic compression also which is reversible so this is reversible reversible adiabatic compression delta s is equal to 0 and delta t here will be t1 minus t2 as that system is going from state d which is at temperature t2 to a state a which is at temperature t1 we have previously seen also that t1 is greater than t2 which will imply that delta t in this case will be given by t1 minus t2 which will be greater than 0 we can also establish this relation from the t v to the power gamma minus 1 equal to constant part but we have already done that and you guys i think can easily see this from this equation also so i am leaving that part out and i will just state the fact here that delta t is greater than 0 so how will that be represented in a ts diagram so this will be just d2a so this will be a vertical line because here delta s is equal to 0 and temperature is increasing that means the direction of arrow will be like this so this is our whole ts diagram so for completion let me 
draw it okay so this is t and this is s so the first part a b which is an isothermal expansion a will be p a v a t 1 to b which will be p b v b t 1 because this is isothermal and the direction will be from a to b where entropy is increasing the second part adiabatic expansion will be from b to c where c is given by pc vc t2 where t1 is greater than t2 and in this case also the temperature is decreasing so this will be the direction next an isothermal compression will be represented like just the opposite of ab so the direction will be here from c to d as the entropy is decreasing here and d is represented by pd pd and t2 and lastly from d to a we are going to have an adiabatic compression where the temperature is going to increase from So, during this part it will be from T1 to T2 and during this part it will be T2 to T1. So, here delta T is going to be less than 0 and here delta T is going to be greater than 0. Okay. So, let me just quickly remove this one and this one. So, this is our answer. Let me put a box around it. So this is our answer and now we look at the options and we are going to see that option B is the one that matches our answer and so this is the correct answer okay. So this was problem number one of this video. I could have just easily stated the facts and derived how the TS diagram will look. In a shortcut way but i just wanted to do it elaborately because we have not yet looked at how to obtain another kind of diagram for example ts diagram from a given pv diagram so the way we did it here this is going to help you also do these problems if it is not only for Carnot cycle but other cycles also so that will depend on the problem okay let us uh, go to the second problem of this video This problem was also given in JAM exam. It was given in JAM 2015. And the problem states that as shown in the PV diagram here, AB and CD, which is this line and this line, are two isotherms at temperatures T1 and T2, and T1 is greater than T2. Okay. AC and BD are two reversible adiabates. So this is C and this is BD, they are reversible adiabates. In this Carnot kind of cycle, which of the following statements are true? So, basically, this is just a Carnot kind of cycle, and we have to see which of the following options given are true. So, there are four options given, and this is another MSQ problem. Okay, so this is just a Carnot cycle where A B is isotherm, B D is adiabat, D C is again isotherm and 
CAs. At Avet, okay, and in this isothermal processes AB and CT, Q1 is the amount of heat taken, and here Q2 will be the amount of heat. transferred to the sink. So, let us go by all the options one by one and we will see which of them are correct. So, option A is Q1 over T1 is equal to Q2 over T2. So, we discussed in the video where we discussed the theory of Arno cycle that this option is correct. How that is coming, I will briefly discuss here, but uh, just let me write that this is a correct statement. Okay, so we know that the efficiency of a Carnot engine can be given by 1 minus Q2 over Q1, which is derived from the formula that efficiency is given by work done by heat received and by calculating the work done in this isothermal and adiabatic processes, we have also obtained that eta is equal to 1 minus T2 over T1, where T2 is the sink temperature and T1 is the source temperature. So, how this thing is arrived? You can check lecture 13. Okay. So, now if we compare this expression and this expression, we will see that Q2 over Q1 is equal to T2 over T1 and this simplifies to Q2 over T2 equal to Q1 over T1. So, let me the box around this expression which is identical to the statement given in a. So, basically that is how we obtain that the uh, option A is one correct answer. Okay. So, let us go to the second option then. The entropy of the source decreases. So, let me write it. So, what is the source in this process? Source is a reservoir at temperature T1 and the Carnot engine, it takes Q1 amount of heat from the source in every cycle. So,
at each cycle. So, which implies that the amount of heat present in the source is actually decreasing and as the temperature T1 of the source is actually a constant then we can calculate the change in entropy of the source delta S source as 1 by T into equation dq. So, integration of dq here over one cycle will be minus q1 over t1 as temperature is t1 for the source. So, as we can see from this expression that delta s source is minus q1 over t1. So, which implies delta s source is less than 0. So, again the statement that the entropy of the source is decreasing is the correct one. So, option B is also a correct option. So, now let us go to the option number C which says that the entropy of the system increases. So, let me write it. Again, here to see if this is a correct statement or not, we can remember the fact that entropy is a state function, which means that the change in entropy will only be dependent on the initial and final state. not path. So, in this cycle the system starts from state A and then goes through state B, D, C and again reaches state A. So, here the initial state is A and the final state is also A and this is for a full cycle. So, as the final and initial states are same, we can easily say that delta S of the system is actually 0. So, the option C is not correct because it states that the entropy of the system is increasing. So, this is not correct. And option D states that work done by the system is W equal to Q1 minus Q2. So, let me write it again.
and we can see here that the system takes it q1 from the reservoir at higher temperature and it gives q2 heat back to the reservoir at colder temperature which is t2 t1 greater than t2 here so naturally we can say that the work done or w is equal to it received minus heat given so it is heat received from source minus heat given to the sink and then this will be w equal to q1 minus q2 so as we can see this is also a correct option okay so the option d is also a correct one so for this mcq option a b d all three are correct answers okay so i think the time for today's video is already over in the next video i will probably do one small problem from kernel engine and then i want to discuss about the refrigerator which is a kernel engine or any kind of heat engine run in reverse so in this case the cycle goes from a to b then b to d then d to c and back to a from c so that is the forward way and in the reverse manner it will go from a c d b then back to a that will be a heat engine run in reverse direction and that can act as an refrigerator so i want to discuss that and maybe i will solve some problem from that part also so that will be our next video so for this video i think we are already done so bye for today